Hello and welcome to my channel. Uh, we'll continue our talk about the lower limb and today's lecture is about the thigh, so let's begin. The thigh is an area between the, uh, <clears throat> the hip region and the knee joints. This area is the thigh. Anteriorly, it's separated from the abdominal wall by the inguinal ligament and posteriorly by the uh, inferior border of the gluteus maximus and the quadratus femoris muscle. Uh, and the thigh region is between these uh, area, between these areas. Structures that leave and enter the thigh uh, are through um, um, go there through uh, three routes. Posteriorly, between uh, uh, remember the recall the uh, structures passing through the greater and lesser sciatic foramina, but some of the structures, mainly the sciatic nerve, enters the thigh, like the posterior femoral cutaneous nerve and the sciatic nerve, for example. Uh, through this um, uh, through this opening anteriorly through the aperture between the inguinal ligament and the pelvic bone uh, where the iliacus and uh, psoas major muscle and the femoral vessels and nerve pass um, uh, pass beneath the inguinal ligament and medially the obturator nerve and vessels passing through the obturator canal um, uh, obturator canal through between uh, the um, uh, pubic rami and uh, the uh, ischial ramus. So these are the um, uh, you know um, inlets and outlets uh, that lead through the um, uh, thigh. The thigh is divided into three compartments by the intermuscular septa. Remember, uh, um, um, you know, um, uh, the fascia, the fascia, the deep fascia usually forms septa in the limbs. Uh, it forms medial and lateral intermuscular septa in the thigh attached to the corresponding lips of linea aspera um, and separating the thigh into three compartments. The anterior compartment is the, for the muscles that extend the knee joint or extend the leg at the knee joint. The posterior compartment is for muscles that extend the hip joint and flex the knee joint, like the hamstrings, for example. And the medial compartment of the thigh uh, is the uh, region that contains the adductors. It's, it all uh, adduct, um, uh, adduct the thigh at the hip joint. So it has an anterior compartment, posterior compartment, and medial compartment. So remember this, please, uh, for the divisions of the thigh muscles, and because this is the plan we are going, uh, we're going by. Uh, in discussing the uh, muscles of the thigh. The bones of the thigh, the bone of the thigh actually, is the femur, which means a thigh. It's the thigh bone. It's the longest bone in the body and strong and very strong bone. Uh, and the, um, uh, we studied the proximal end and uh, with the hip joint. Now we're uh, studying the shaft and the distal end of the femur. The shaft is convex forwards and uh, goes obliquely from lateral to medial so that the knees uh, are closer to midline uh, than uh, the upper parts, the upper parts of the femur. Uh, it's uh, around seven degrees uh, in, the coronal, in the coronal section, in the coronal uh, plane seven degrees so the knees are closer to midline uh, than uh, the hips for example or the upper parts uh, formed by the upper parts of the femur the middle of the shaft is triangular in cut section like you see here this is the posterior aspect of the shaft this is the anterior aspect of the shaft and the, it has a posterior border that forms the linea aspera. See, this is the linea aspera with its medial lip and lateral lips. See, medial lip and lateral lip of linea aspera. 
and it has medial and lateral rounded borders medial and lateral rounded borders this is the left femur by the way and this is the posterior aspect of the femur and this is the anterior aspect of the uh, femur remember the linea aspera on the back of the femur the linea aspera as you can see the whole thing here diverges upwards remember uh, to the spiral line and to the gluteal line of the gluteal tuberosity and diver diverges downwards to the medial and lateral supracondylar lines or supracondylar uh, ridges medial supracondylar uh, line lateral supracondylar line they direct it towards the epicondyles and the medial supracondylar li uh, line goes to the region of the epicondyle where is the adductor tubercle it's for the attachment of the adductor magnus uh, muscle so this is the linea aspera on the back of the uh, femur the medial and lateral condyles uh, this is the right knee flexed uh, viewed from anterior uh, this is the fibula so this is lateral this is medial the lateral condyles are separated anteriorly as you can see here uh, separated uh, posteriorly I'm, I'm sorry as you can see here and united anteriorly they unite anteriorly where they articulate with the patella and separated posteriorly by the intercondylar fossa this is called the intercondylar uh, fossa on the anterior aspects of the condyles there is a shallow groove oblique groove that uh, demarcates the articulation uh, with the tibia from the from that with the patella the patella articulates with this surface see this triangular trench v-shaped trench surface uh, and the rest for the articulation with the tibia as you can see it encroaches more on the lateral condyle than it is on the medial uh, condyle this trench formed by for by the surface for articulating with the patella is called the patellar surface and uh, the lateral surface of the trench is larger and steeper than the medial uh, surface remember uh, in the knee joint it's not only the articulation between the femur and tibia no it's the articulation between the femur and the patella as well the femoropatellar joint remember that and remember also that the superior tibiofibular joint does not belong to the knee joint but it belongs to the knee region okay it belongs to the knee region but does not belong does not share in the uh, knee joint so actually the the, the fibula uh, as we will study later does not bear any weight uh, you know from the body because it's attached to the undersurface of the lateral condyle of the tibia uh, the uh, uh, the same uh, the same drawing here now this is the lateral condyle the medial surface of the lateral condyle which is this surface has a facet as you can see for the anterior cruciate ligament the cruciate ligaments are named after their attachment to the tibia not to the femur so the anterior cruciate ligament attaches to a facet on the medial surface of the lateral condyle of the femur while the posterior cruciate ligament as you can see here attaches to a facet on the lateral surface on a lateral surface or lateral wall of the medial condyle remember this please the posterior cruciate ligament goes to the medial condyle while the anterior cruciate ligament goes to the lateral uh, condyles the epicondyles uh, the ones you see here this is the medial epicondyle this is the lateral epicondyle are non-articular surfaces on the outer surface of the condyles and they are for the attachment of the knee ligaments like the tibial collateral ligament and the fibular collateral uh, uh, ligament okay and uh, also when you uh, look at the femur from the side you will find realize that the lateral condyle 
protrudes anteriorly, anteriorly more than the medial condyle. This is crucial and very important in the stability of the patella, as we will discuss in the knee joint, because the patella is pulled on from lateral to medial by the inclination of the femur from 7 degrees, as we discussed earlier, so it tends to go laterally. That's why the lateral condyle protrudes more anterior to prevent the, the patella from dislocating to the lateral side by the pull of the quadriceps uh, muscle. This is the patella. Uh, we have bones that grow in tendons. These bones are called or classified as sesamoid bones. Sesamoid bones, they are bones that grow in tendons, and uh, the patella represents the largest sesamoid bone in the body. There are other sesamoid bones like the pisiform, for example, in the breast, like the uh, fabella and the tendon of the uh, biceps femoris, uh, like the one in the tendon in peroneus longus, lies like the two in flexor hallucis brevis in the foot, so you will encounter sesamoid bones in different regions of the body. The patella is the largest sesamoid bone. It grows in the quadriceps tendon. And when shattered, when broken, the fragments stay inside the tendon unless the tendon is torn. Uh, 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 this is when you study in surgery the fractures of the patella. Uh, the, the patella is triangular in shape, means it has an apex. See, the apex is not upwards, downwards. Directed downwards for the attachment of the patellar ligament. And the base is upwards for the attachment of the quadriceps tendon. Now, we need to identify medial from lateral. This is the posterior surface of the patella, as you can see here. Can you recognize this large surface, lateral articular surface, and medial articular surface or facet with a ridge in between? Uh, so the lateral surface is much larger than the medial surface, articular surface of the patella. So if this is lateral and this is medial, this is superior and this is inferior, this must be a right patella. So it's easy to identify the right from left patella, not uh, as hard as you can think. Uh, actually, if you encounter it in the exam, look at the how the patella is put on the uh, table in front of you. If it, it's resting on a side, this side must be the lateral side because the lateral surface, lateral facet, articular surface on the posterior surface of the patella is much larger than the medial uh, facet. This is how you identify uh, right from left patelli. The proximal end of tibia, we're looking at the superior aspect of the, of the tibia. Uh, this is front and this is back. This is anterior, this is posterior. This is lateral because this is the head of the fibula here and this is medial, so this is the right tibia. We're looking at the tibial plateau. This flat surface at the top is the medial plateau that has the medial condyle and the lateral condyle. The medial condyle is larger than the lateral condyle and it's oval in shape. The articular surface, superior articular surface is oval in shape while the lateral condyle is little smaller than the medial condyle and the superior articular surface is circular in shape as you can see here. In the middle, there is an intercondylar eminence or intercondylar ridges that has two tubercles, medial and lateral tubercles. And this ridge for the attachment of the menisci and the cruciate ligaments, the lateral meniscus and medial meniscus and the cruciate anterior and posterior cruciate uh, ligaments. Uh, on the front of the tibia, as you can see here, little down from the tibial plateau is the tibial tuberosity. This is the tibial tuberosity. Okay, when you sit on your knees, uh, you are sitting actually on the tibial uh, uh, tuberosity. Okay, so this is the upper part of the tibia or the proximal part of the uh, tibia or the tibial plateau. The, uh, uh, the shaft of tibia, as I told you before, it has the tibial tuberosity at the front. 
it has a lateral interosseous border and medial border and anterior borders now this surface the medial surface is subcutaneous and you can feel it under the skin uh, posterior surface is crossed by a line called the soleal line for the attachment of the soleus muscle we will study this in the posterior compartment of the leg muscles proximal end of fibula on the other hand see it's a thin bone uh, with a tapering neck this is the neck of the fibula it's liable to fractures and the common perineal nerve is related to the neck of fibula so it's liable to injury in fractures of the neck of fibula it has a head and as you can see there is a styloid process uh, projecting from the head of the fibula this styloid process for the attachment of the fibular collateral ligament or the lateral ligament of the knee it's the same uh, name pulled on by the uh, lateral uh, uh, ligament of the knee or the fibular collateral uh, ligament now the fascia, fascia of the thigh uh, we have superficial and deep fascia the superficial fascia is adipose layer it has fatty layer and it's continuous with uh, uh, the fascia fascia of the abdomen and the deep layer is membranous layer and it attaches just below the inguinal ligament to the deep fascia the, uh, the 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 deep layer of the uh, superficial fascia attaches to the deep fascia of the thigh below the inguinal ligament as at the 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 uh, at the site of flexure or the crease produced by the flexion of the uh, hip the uh, we were not looking at the super, the membranous layer here we're looking at the deep fascia here we're looking at the fascia later but uh, on top of this the membranous layer of the superficial fascia um, especially under this uh, uh, over this uh, sorry over this opening is fenestrated by uh, you know lymphatic vessels uh, venous uh, uh, RT arteries uh, small artery arterial branches or venous or small vein or small veins draining into the great saphenous vein like the superficial circumflex iliac superficial and deep external pudendal and superficial epigastric veins they all drain into the, the great saphenous vein after piercing this membranous layer of the superficial layer this membranous layer fenestrated membranous layer is called the cribriform fascia so the cribriform fascia belongs to the superficial fascia please remember this it belongs to the membranous layer of the superficial layer and it covers the saphenous opening of the deep fascia of the fascia lata of the thigh the deep fascia or called they call it the fascia lata of the thigh uh, it's it encloses the whole thigh below it's attached to the uh, all bony prominences around the knee above you don't have to memorize the attachment proximal attachment uh, there are a lot as you can see here but you know understand it it wants to enclose the whole thigh so it wants to attach to the whole circumference of the hip bone so it's attached to the iliac crest here it's attached to the back of sacrum back of coccyx and the sacrotubulus ligament and the ischial tuberosity here it's attached to the superior and inferior pubic remi okay and in this area it's attached to the inguinal ligament which extends between the anterior superior iliac spine and the pubic tubercle so these are the proximal attachments of the deep fascia of the thigh it splits to enclose splits to enclose the gluteus maximus and tensor fascia later this is the gluteus maximus and this is the tensor fascia later muscle this is the tensor fascia lata muscle also the deep fascia condenses on the lateral side as you can see here to form um, a thick ribbon of fascia called the iliotibial tract the iliotibial tract encloses completely the tensor fascia lata and inserts uh, uh, please uh, pay attention here 
it's on the lateral side, right? So you expect that it, it attaches to the fibula lower down. This is wrong, completely wrong. The iliotibial tract attaches to the lateral surface of the upper part of the tibia. It's attached to the tibia, not the fibula. And this is a multiple choice uh, question. Now, the iliotibial tract, uh, superiorly, superiorly the, the gluteus maximus and the tensor fascia lata are attached to it. Inferiorly, the vastus lateralis attaches to it. The function of this iliotibial tract is during standing, during getting up, it fixes the femur on the tibia during standing, during, you know, the, the, the action of getting up or standing. And as you, can, uh, as you all know, it forms a groove on the lateral side of the thigh. When you get up, a groove is formed on the lateral side of the thigh. This is because of the tension on the iliotibial uh, tract. So remember this, the iliotibial tract is a product of the deep fascia of the thigh, not the superficial fascia of the uh, thigh. The distal attachment, uh, as I told you before, of the uh, fascia lata of the thigh uh, to every bony prominence around the knee, like the condyles of tibia, femur, and head of fibula. And in this cut section of the thigh, this is front, this is back, this is medial, so this is the right thigh, uh, right thigh, uh, uh, okay. Uh, if you are looking at, uh, if, if you're looking at from below, uh, this is, uh, you know, the quadriceps femoris muscle, and these are the adductor muscles, and these are the hamstring muscles of the posterior compartment. Now, where are the intermuscular septa we talked about? The medial intermuscular septum here, separates the vastus medialis from the adductors, as you can see. And this is the lateral intermuscular septum that separates the vastus lateralis from the biceps uh, femoris muscle. So it divides the thigh, thigh into anterior compartment, into medial compartment, and posterior uh, compartment. Also, the deep fascia of the thigh uh, contains the prepatellar bursa, right in front of the patella at the knee uh, region. Okay. Um, um, the deep fascia also of the thigh forms the saphenous opening. This is the saphenous opening. It's not a complete circular, a circular opening. It has a superior margin, lateral margin, and inferior margin. It's defective medially. This is a multiple choice question. It has only superior, lateral, and inferior margins. Uh, it's called the falciform margin of the, um, um, of the saphenous opening. Now, what, this, uh, what does the saphenous opening, um, uh, what passes through the saphenous opening? The great saphenous vein is the main thing. Lymphatics between superficial and deep uh, groups and branches from the femoral artery uh, that supply this region like the lateral circumflex iliac and superficial and deep uh, external uh, podendos. The superficial branches of the femoral artery pass through the saphenous opening as well. So please remember the saphenous opening and remember what the fascia lata actually uh, does in the lower limb because it's a good essay question if you're asked about uh, to write an account or essay about the deep fascia of the thigh remember that the cribriform fascia does not belong to the deep fascia of the thigh and remember the iliotibial tract the medial and lateral intermuscular septa and actually it encloses all the muscles individually the deep fascia of the thigh as, uh, as seen in this section, all the muscles individually are enclosed in uh, by septa from the deep fascia of the thigh. And also remember the saphenous opening with its superior, lateral, and inferior uh, margins. This concludes our talk about the uh, bones and fascia of the thigh. 
I hope you got the maximum benefit from this lecture and thank you very much for watching.